Welcome to the latest episode of the Good Dram Show with me, Chris Goodrum. Okay, so today we're back to looking at whiskey. Um, well, sort of. Um, I'll explain in a second. Um, the I guess you could say that this episode of the show is going to be the first part in uh, a, a world tour. Um, now you're probably wondering what the hell I'm talking about. I'm not talking about a physical world tour, obviously. We're talking about um, a, a whiskey world tour, sort of. Um, I'll explain. Well... As you well know, I have an absolute plethora of boxes of, uh, of samples uh, dotted about the place. And um, I, yesterday I just thought, well, it's, it's time for a bit of a rummage in one. So I kind of grabbed one at random and um, it happened to have uh, a number of samples in from um, the 2015 World Whiskey Awards, uh, the first round, uh, in which I tasted... Um, I think I did actually did two two people's um, tastings. I think uh, a, a judge dropped out, if memory serves me correct. But I certainly did um, blends, uh, both sort of Scottish and um, world. I did European whiskies. I did uh, world whiskies um, for for that particular uh, round of the uh, the World Whiskey Awards. And um, I thought, wow, look at all these really interesting samples and bits and pieces. And put together probably about sort of oh, I don't know, about half a dozen, I guess, episodes of the show. So um, we'll be looking at some some weird and wonderful stuff from around the globe over the next sort of half a dozen or so episodes. So although this particular episode of the show had already been planned, um, I, I, you can look at it, I suppose, as the, as the first part of uh, of the grand tour, shall we say? Um, so. Anyway, uh, th this week's episode of the show is, uh, as you can see, uh, of Scandinavian origin, um, Swedish to be precise, and um, as you well know, I have a, a fondness for, for, for Swedish whiskies, and um, certainly the, the, the quality that's, uh, of, of the products that are coming out of Sweden at the moment are just yeah, absolutely superb, so... Um, You'll just have to excuse the fact that I fancied doing another episode. And I didn't quite have enough um, whiskies to, to do one, um, but I had some odds and sods, shall we say. So um, this is a kind of a bit of an, uh, uh, an odd episode, but, you know, I'll explain all when uh, introduce uh, this afternoon's little lineup. So we've got whiskey and other spirits, so uh, I'm hoping this is going to be... Uh, uh, interesting, so um, I guess we'll uh, introduce today's one. Right, okay, so um, you probably remember uh, a few episodes ago I did uh, a gin episode of the show and uh, looked at a gin called Vida Tour, which is produced by the um, OHD distillery in uh, in Sweden and um, they've released a couple of other products which um, uh, number one drinks the uh, uh, distributor kindly sent me some samples of um, and so the first one we've been looking at is called Akavit um, I hope I pronounced that correctly this is bottled at 41% and um, it's uh, I believe a sort of a, a, a native um, Scandinavian spirit it's, it's I guess you know, sort of, uh, a, 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 sort of along the, the gin kind of lines, I suppose, uh, in that it's you know, a, a botanical flavoured spirit. Um, its uh, botanicals are uh, dandelion root, heather flowers, angelica root, yarrow, chamomile flower, sorrel, hyssop, and uh, whorehound. Um, it spent about uh, 12 months aging in um, American oak and uh, like I said it's bottled at 41% so it should be an interesting um, interesting one to kick off with. Um, the second bottle we'll be looking at is called Marker uh, this is bottled at 35% um, maybe I should have done it the other way around because of the ABV but this is always going to be the difficult thing when you've got different ABVs, different styles of spirit, you know, where do you start? Anyway, this is obviously, as you can see, a little bit darker in colour. Um, and um, it's a, a digestive bitter, uh, which has 16 botanicals, of which uh, some are dandelion, bog myrtle, angelica root, and uh, it's sweetened um, 
post distillation uh, with honey uh, and then has a relatively short period of uh, cask maturation probably just to kind of like um, marry all the, uh, the the elements together uh, I don't know how long it's spends in the cask but uh, and I'm guessing probably a lot of the color is well, possibly going to come from the honey and uh, there might be a little bit from the oak as well but that should be that should be interesting um, the third bottling we'll be looking at is the uh, oak aged Stran. Uh, now as you know um, uh, Par at, uh, at Schmogen produces the, the Stran gin and uh, this is uh, I believe the sort of the latest w one that was released uh, back in um, sort of tail end of last last year, sort of September. Well, I tasted it certainly in September, and uh, it's bottled at fifty five percent. So I believe it's effectively the merchant strength um, gin, uh, which is aged for well over a year. I don't know exactly how long uh, in ex uh, Schmogen um, sherry casks. So um, a little bit of colour, um, and um, yeah, I think that should be uh, quite interesting. Then we're going to move on to three three whiskies. Hooray! You probably all say um, this is a crafty way of getting getting you to watch an episode of the show with gin because I know that they're not the most popular episodes. Um, we're going to be looking at uh, the box Dalvi now. Um, as you probably know, I did an episode of the show. I think it was including a couple of uh, box whiskies samples that I toasted for the the, the whiskey magazine uh, some time ago. But this is the um, first shall we say, um, release that's, that's kind of headed to these shores. The previous two were, weren't were um, uh, widely available, shall we say. And um, the uh, the interesting thing about this is you go on the website and it literally gives you the minutiae of information about, uh, about the whiskey. And um, this is, um, spirits around about five years old and... Uh, Get this breakdown. Okay, so 63.48%. I mean, well, you could just say 63.4%, but no, it has to be 63.48 is 5.24 years. Now, I don't quite know what the 2.24 is. Is it 0.24 of a year or is it 24 weeks? Or I don't know. You Swedes, you're mad. Um, so anyway, it's, this is 63.48% uh, uh, 5.24 year old unpeated uh, whiskey which was aged in a 200 litre first fill bourbon cask. 24.13 is a 5.23 year old peated whiskey from a 200 litre first fill bourbon cask. And the remaining 12.39% is 5.07 year old unpeated whiskey from a 135 litre first fill bourbon cask. All the casks I believe were sourced from uh, Heaven Hill and Jack Daniels. So um, yeah, I think it's going to be interesting. Like I said, you know, there's some great whiskey coming out of uh, out Sweden. So uh, um, this will be the uh, it'll be an interesting one. So. Moving swiftly on, we're going to be looking at the Schmogen Triple. Now, um, this is uh, quite uh, quite interesting, if I can find my uh, information. Um, this is obviously Parr's Triple Distilled Spirit, uh, and this is the great thing about sort of the non-Scottish distilleries. They can do all this stuff. They can play around with sort of triple distillation and mash bills and all this kind of stuff, you know. Um, but anyway, this is... Um, Triple distilled, heavily peated optic barley, uh, aged for um, five years in uh, two ex Saturns barriques. Uh, those barriques were five stroke 2011 and six stoke stroke 2011. Uh, it, so obviously it was distilled in 2011, <laughs> funnily enough, and it was bottled in January of this year. So like I said, this is five years old. And finally, we'll be looking at this one. And this is a bottling, again, another Schmogen bottling, uh, called the Wee Swede. Now, the Wee Swede, I believe, sold out in kind of record time, I, I think. But then again, sort of, all of Schmogen's bottlings, as soon as they hit the market, they kind of like get snapped up, um, in uh, certainly in, in Sweden anyway. Uh, this is a four-year-old. Uh, it was distilled in 2012, a single cask of heavily peated optic barley 
Now, uh, it was distilled in March of 2016, and the interesting thing about this is that um, Parr basically took the single bourbon cask and then filled it in and put the contents into two 30-litre uh, blood tub uh, casks, very small little casks, um, which were made from new Swedish oak. So it's kind of interesting. Um, apparently he did this uh, three times and leaving it in the cask for two months uh, in each time and then the whiskey was then returned back to uh, the original uh, bourbon cask for uh, a period of marrying. So like I said, four years old, uh, distilled initially in March of 2012 and was finally bottled in August of 2016. So um, you would have thought I probably should have done these two the other way around, but um, this is by the, 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 sweet, the wee Swede is bottled at 62.5, whereas the triple is only 54. So, um, like I said, it's difficult to figure out which way around to do these, but hopefully I've kind of got it right. So, um, I think that's uh, that's enough waffling, and I think it's about time I actually tasted something. So Right, okay, so let's uh, kick off with the agavit. Let's uh, see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Quite, quite floral and sweet. Uh, I'm certainly getting the chamomile, and I'm guessing the sort of sweetness is possibly the meadow sweet. Um, it's, a, it's, it's rounded. It's got a, it's a touch of oak, vanilla, just sort of sitting in the background. It's, uh, it's got an, a, a lovely softness. Yet there's a, a little bit of almost citric freshness um, touch of almost aniseed uh, possibly um, or, or could possibly be maybe caraway maybe not quite so out is that that sort of, of character um, as a like I said there's a, a, a it's a nice nicely balanced nose so um, let's see uh, see what the palate gives us Quite sweet and herbal, but it's got a real crispness as well, almost a minerality to it. Um, well, yeah, I suppose you could call it a minerality. Um, again, there's a bit of chamomile, a bit of sweetness, meadow sweet possibly. Um, a sort of caraway note, certainly right on the finish, sort of licorice caraway kind of uh, kind of character. Yeah, it's fresh, it's it's pleasant. Um, it's obviously. Uh, no, I suppose you have to kind of like that kind of uh, of spirit, but I think you know, um, as we've seen from the Vida Tour, which I thought was uh, you know absolutely top quality gin. This is you know a really really good hack of it. Not that I've tasted very much hack of it, but um, certainly this one's rather good. Right. Okay. So let's move on to the marker. Let's uh, see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Now that's an altogether different spirit, as to be said. That's got a obvious, um, slightly darkish honey kind of sweetness, um, but there's also quite a bitter character there as well. Sort of ginger, uh, pepper, possibly. Um, again, there's a, a little bit of berry fruit. There's some definite dandelion. It's almost kind of dandelion and burdocky sort of. Um, character again really clean fresh um, yeah really quite interesting it's got a, a sort of a, quite a dustiness to the, to the spice um, not an earthiness a kind of dustiness you know like sort of throwing a, a load of spice in the air and you know anyway um, yeah that's 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 an interesting nose let's, let's see what the palate gives us then shall we Again, nice bitter, sweet balance, um, lovely soft gingery spice finish, 
touch of honey, a um, bit of chamomile, um, berry fruits. Again, like I said, that, that spice note is quite dusty, uh, certainly on the finish. And um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's really nicely balanced. And uh, uh, again, like I said, I think the quality of the, uh, um, the spirit coming out of the, uh, the OHD distillery um, Note I haven't tried to pronounce this in its full name because I think I, well, yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's really, really nice. So again, something a bit different, shall we say. Right, okay, so uh, let's move on to the, uh, the Oak Aged Strand. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Oh, that's got a lovely pungent nose. Um, classic um sort of almost sort of medicinal um kind of notes uh touch of coriander juniper obviously um cinnamon a little bit of spice sort of dried fruit sherry spice coming through as well really nicely balanced lovely intensity not too much oak, I think, is the is is the the thing with uh, this. Is, as I've probably said before, certainly when I was doing the the oak aged gins tasting, um, that is always the the, the, the the key aspect of a, an oak aged gin is getting the balance between the gin character and the and the oak character. Uh, and this is absolutely spot on. It's not too heavy. It's just sitting in the background, just adding a little bit of sort of vanilla and uh, and cherry spice and dried fruit yeah that's that's a lovely nose Let's see what the palate does a little bit more sherry cask on on the palate certainly at the, the beginning a little bit more of the dried fruit herbs but that sort of fresh citric uh, juniper lime um, kind of comes in on on the mid palate really freshens it gives it that um, kind of to a certain extent removes uh, a lot of the, the oak character so you're getting that sort of lovely sort of um, juniper and uh, lime sort of mid palate and then it's sort of some light spices kind of creep in right at the finish there's a, a little bit of sort of toasted oak as well uh, just right on the finish again that is fantastic gin really really nicely balanced uh, great progression so um, so yeah another really very very good gin from uh, from um, Schmogen or Par or Okay, so let's uh, take a look at the boxed Albi. Um, so, as I was saying early on, this is the sort of the first, I guess, worldwide release, and uh, I believe this is going to be, you know, their, their core, if you like, uh, bottling. So, uh, it'd be interesting to see whether this kind of develops as the spirit gets older, or whether they kind of keep it at around about the sort of five years of age. But uh, anyway, let's uh, let's see what the nose gives us. That's a lovely nose. Um, Yes, I kind of, I suppose it's an Irish kind of cat feel to it. It's got that lovely banana-y, apricot -y, um, almost kind of subtropical fruit nose. Um, plenty of new oak, um, lots and lots of creamy vanilla. But there's a little bit of, of balancing uh, apple, um, sort of lemon note um, I mean it, it, it's it's young it's exuberant it's fruity it's big um, and it kind of it does sort of remind me of some of, uh, like if you could cross an Irish whiskey with maybe um, young um, Mac Myra possibly there's certainly a, a sort of a, a lovely fruitiness uh, to the whiskey and uh, it's really impressive it's 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 lovely. I mean, there's a, a lovely sweetness to the fruit, but it's not too sweet. It's got some balance. Um, yeah, that is uh, that's a lovely nose. That's uh, 
see what power's on. Creamy, fruity, there's a little bit of earthy peat kind of coming through but not a great deal, it's probably coming more through on, on the finish. Um, a little bit of bittering from the oak as well but again it's wonderfully fleshy, there's lots of vanilla, there's apricot, there's apple, um, that lovely sort of new oaky ca character, um, really full, really easy. Um, and it's got a relative amount of, of, of complexity for, for a young whiskey. It's got a lovely progression. Um, so, yeah, I mean, really, really nice. You could argue the finish is a little bit austere um, and a little bit maybe too dry. Um, but I kind of like that because it kind of like you, you start off the progression with, with all that big sort of slightly sweet, chewy fruit. Um, and then sort of like, you know, the, the, the minerality, the citrus, the, the alcohol kind of kicks in and it kind of, and a little bit of oak bittering on the finish kind of just gives it, gives it a really nice progression. So, um, so yeah, I, I think that's pretty impressive. Right, okay, so let's uh, move on to the uh, Schmogen Triple. Let's uh, see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Soft, herbal, quite crisp, almost sort of column stilly kind of dried fruit. Um, really sort of crisp and clean. A little bit of peat, um, but not a huge amount considering this is a heavily peated um, barley. Um, obviously, the sort of the triple distillation of it has kind of stripped out quite a lot of the. Uh, the peated notes. So now I'm getting the Saturn's honey, um, slight sort of tight, grainy French oak tannins. Oh, so that really complex, lovely. I mean, again, you know, it's not too much oak. Um, yes, you, you think sort of triple distillation, sort of very light spirit. Um, stick it in Saturn's cask and you're just going to get an overload of, uh, of cask but I'll tell you what you don't um, this is really nicely balanced really fresh and crisp and um, lovely intensity it has to be said um, I think if memory serves me right we've actually still got a bottle of this in stock which is um, quite surprising but if, it's, uh, if this is sort of uh, up your sort of street and you didn't buy a bottle then you really should do this is, this is good, this is lovely. Let's, uh, let's see what the power's like. Wonderfully soft, honeyed. A little bit more cask on on the palate. Um, it's more of that sort of grapey, winey sort of fruit notes. A um, little bit of spice, drying kind of dustyish sort of peat right on the aftertaste. Um, subtly smoky, um, quite full. A little bit more, like I said, cask orientated on the palate, but it's certainly you get that lovely sort of fresh crispness from the from the spirit. Um, kind of uh, sort of balancing up the sort of the, the Saturn's honey and sweetness and um, yeah I like that that's really really impressive it has to be said and and like I said this is one the wonderful thing about um, Schmogen and like I said non-Scottish distilleries they they are just doing some interesting stuff I mean it's not to say that the Scottish distilleries are not doing interesting stuff but obviously um, non-Scottish distilleries have a little bit more um, scope for playing with, with, with different things. I mean, obviously, yeah, when, when it comes to triple distillation, any, any distillery in Scotland could, could actually do that. I'm not saying that, that they don't, but um, what I love about, about sort of Schmogen and, and, uh, is that, you know, that they're willing to sort of try these interesting things. I mean, because it could have been a complete disaster, you know, and then you've got sort of a, a load of spirit that you probably don't want a bottle. And 
but you know, I think uh, I think this has uh, kind of worked really, really nicely. So yeah, another another very, very good bottling from Smith. Right, and finally we're going to take a look at the wee Swede. So uh, yeah, like I said earlier on, uh, original originally aged in um, uh, a bourbon cask and then put through a couple of uh, small blood tubs made from uh, Swedish oak. So uh, let's, uh, let's see what the nose gives us then, shall we? Intense, oily, cereally, vibrant. It's, it's kind of, it's got a real sort of youthful, natural sort of intensity. There's a touch of, of almost kind of pine sap. Um, and and, and it's got a distinct wood note uh, on on the on the nose, um, which is obviously the, the the Swedish oak, and it's sort of similar-ish to um, to French oak. It's, it has a sort of a tightness and a graininess to it, um, which is really interesting. Slightly manurey now. The peat is becoming quite manurey. Um, Smoke. There's a, 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 I'm getting a a little bit of apricot, a bit of bit of vanilla. Wow, Joe, that is a really complex nose. Again, I mean, this is only four years old, and I'm just really blown away by the complexity. Um, I mean, yes, all right, you can argue that it's to gain that complexity, it's dabbled and you know. Um, but the point being is, at the end of the day, it's it's that that counts it doesn't really matter how it gets there um, and, and certainly the oak doesn't feel forced it's not like the maturation has been you know um, forced to get this thing out onto the market it's basically I'm guessing that Pa thought well what, what happens if I do this you know um, and then sort of goes oh I really like that I think I'll release that you know and I'm bloody glad he did because this is really impressive stuff it has to be said Let's uh, see what the palate gives us. Dusty barley, sweet apricot, lovely sort of thick set honey, a lot of alcohol though, really hits the mid, the mid, the mid palate. Um, but the finish is, is lovely, smoky, dusty, manure earthy peat. Real, again, like I said, a real natural kind of character to it. Um, not getting so much American oak. Um, there's a little bit of that sort of tighter grained oak on, on the finish, but um, the alcohol is really quite masking and quite, quite intense. And I think um, it certainly needs a, a little drop of water and... I'm going to indeed add a little drop of water and see, just to see what happens. Um, but oh, that, that is intense, that really is one hell of a whiskey, it has to be said. So let's uh, see what a little drop of water has done to the nose. Less oak now, um, more oily spirit. Still quite peated and a lot of the time with cask strength. Um, peated malts you tend to put a little drop of water with it and that really does kind of you know kick the peat into touch so to speak but not here this has certainly got uh, plenty of peat character and barley a little bit rounded a little bit simpler a little bit more like I said um, emphasizing the, the, the spirit character as opposed to the um, uh, the, the oak but God, it's still lovely it's still really it's bringing out a, a fleshiness now to the fruit, a bit of white apple and even a bit of pear possibly, something like that. Anyway, let's, uh, let's see what the power's done now. Fuller, sweeter, softer. Again, certainly uh, the, hasn't really sort of uh, mitigated the peat. The peat is still there. It's intense. It's earthy. The fruit has kind of 
a little bit fuller, a little bit more creaminess coming through from the uh, the American oak. Um, I'm certainly getting a little bit of what feels like tight tannins right on the finish, so I'm guessing that's kind of like the the, um, uh, the Swedish oak. Um, quite a dry, dusty, peaty, mm, mouth-coating finish. I mean, that is just really intense. Um, absolutely fabulous, it has to be said. And, um, mm, mm, damn, that's good. Right, okay, so let's sum today's uh, episode of the show up. Uh, first, firstly, I'd just like to say a big thank you to um, the distilleries and the... Uh, um, uh, agents for, for sending the samples for, from all three of these uh, uh, distilleries that's always uh, really appreciated and what's also really appreciated is uh, the, those of you that take the time to make comments on the videos and um, you know, just, just, it's just nice to know that, that people are enjoying uh, uh, what one does so anyway so coming back to today's uh, tasting the act of it yeah I, I mean like I said the I think the spirit that's coming out of OHD is just really, really impressive. And, you know, maybe sort of, you know, weird Swedish sort of uh, spirits are probably not your thing. Um, but certainly if gin is your thing, worth worth tasting the, the, the Vida Tour. So the Akavit, yep, yeah, really nice, really good character. Just a bit different, something interesting. Um, if you like digestive bitters, then certainly the marker is really quite impressive. Uh, really well balanced, you know, the, the, the sweet, the bitter balance of, uh, of the spirit is just absolutely spot on and um, again, just something a little bit different and uh, if, again, if that's your kind of thing, certainly worth uh, worth hunting down. The, uh, the, the OK Strand, really very, very good. Again, like I've said before, with oak aged gins, it's all about the, the, the balance between the gin character and the oak character, and, and I think that the uh, the Stran is absolutely spot on. Um, Par has got it just 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 right, uh, not too too heavy on the oak, really well balanced, uh, and still plenty of gin character. The Box Dalvi, well, yeah, again, great whiskey, it has to be said, and it's just uh, goes to show that the distillery is producing some great whiskey. Um, I've tasted sort of three of their their, their whiskies now. Uh, one of which wasn't quite as impressive as uh, uh, as the other two, but this I think is this is going to be their core uh, bottling for for the sort of world markets. Then you know, best get yourself a bottle of this because this is really very very good. If you like that kind of sort of like big, slightly tropical, fruity sort of Irishy kind of ish kind of uh, style of whiskey, then yeah. Definitely worth getting your hands on. Um, the Smogan Triple, really like that. Uh, again, Par just producing some, some brilliant whiskey. And uh, the same can be said from the Wee Swede, which was really very, very impressive. And the interesting thing was about the Triple, for me anyway, was how it had affected the peak character. I'm guessing that um, the spirit for both of those two bottlings was probably peated to the same uh, level of peating, it's the same parts per million, but the triple distillation has certainly removed uh, a fair chunk of the peat character. I mean, it's still there, uh, but uh, it's certainly removed a fair amount of it. And um, God, the wee sweet was bloody good. Uh, all I can say is that sort of I have not tasted a, a bad bottling from the smoking distillery. And if you love great whiskey, uh, just you know. When it comes out, just grab yourself a bottle um, because it is really very, very impressive stuff. So, anyway, so that's this week's episode of the show in the bag. Like I said, the next few episodes will be uh, uh, some weird and wonderful stuff from around the world. So, I don't quite know where we're going to start, but um, all I can say is that it's going to be an interesting journey. So, good afternoon and good drumming.